Hi. So we're going to take a look at this problem here, which is modeling a toy truck. Now we're going to start with the free body diagram. And the problem says that the truck's engine is producing a forward force of 0.6 newtons. So that's the first force that we're going to draw, a forward force of 0 0.6 newtons. It also mentions that there's a resistive force, a backwards resistive force of magnitude 9V. So the backward force changes with velocity. Now, there's always, of course, a weight. Uh, since the mass is 3 kilogram, the weight will be 3 times gravity. And finally, we have a reaction force or a contact force between the ground. So the ground is pushing the train up. Now that we have the free body diagram, let's go ahead and start to model the system using Newton's laws. So Newton's law states that the sum of forces in x equals m a in the x direction. Now, since this thing is moving forward, in this case left, left will be positive. The engine is pushing the train forward. Now, the sum of forces will be 0 0.6, that's going left, so that'll be positive, minus 9v, which is going backwards, so it'll be negative, equals the mass, which is 3, multiplied by acceleration. Next step, let's replace acceleration with the derivative of velocity with respect to time, so it becomes dv over dt. Now, we can divide everything by 3 pretty easily. You can see everything divides by 3, so 0 0.6 divided by 3 is 0 0.2, Minus 9 divided by 3 is 3. And 3 divided by 3, of course, is 1. So here we have dv over dt, like so. Now, all we have to do now is rearrange everything, like in the question. And another way of writing dv over dt is v dot. Dot meaning derivative with respect to time. So our final equation will be dv over dt, add 3v to both sides, so it becomes plus 3v, and subtract 0 0.2 from both sides. Final step, simply replace dv over dt with v dot plus 3v minus 0 0.2. And what you have there is exactly the same as the question has asked you to describe the motion. So, part B asks us to show that t is a function of v. So basically, we need to solve the differential equation. So starting with the same differential equation from part A, we need to use separation of variables to solve this differential equation. I'm going to start by moving these two terms to the other side of the equation. So what we're going to have is dv over dt is equal to 0 0.2 minus 3v. Now, the next step, we're going to multiply both sides by dt. So you get dv equals 0 0.2 minus 3v, all multiplied by dt. Next, I'm going to divide both sides by this term here. So then we're going to have v and dv on the same side. So what I'm going to have is 1 over 0 0.2 minus 3v dv equals dt. And now we can go ahead and add our integration signs to both sides. So we're ready to integrate now our function. Now, starting with the left side here. 
Now, the rule I'm going to use to integrate this, I'm going to write on the right side here. And the rule is that the integration of f dash x over f of x is equal to lin f of x magnitude of f of x. So what that means is the numerator has to be the derivative of the denominator. If your numerator is the derivative of the denominator, you can integrate it and it becomes equal to lin of the denominator. So looking back at our equation here, we can clearly see that the derivative of the denominator is minus 3, but we don't have minus 3 here. So we need to find a way of putting minus 3 here. And in maths, we can put minus 3 here, which is fine. You can multiply by minus 3, as long as you do the same thing to both sides to balance the equation. So it becomes the integration of minus 3 all divided by 0 0.2 minus 3v. Now the numerator is the derivative of the denominator. However, we can't just randomly put minus 3, so we have to put multiply both sides by minus 3. Now we can use our rule. So the integration on the left will be lin f of x, so magnitude of 0 0.2 minus 3v, and the integration of minus 3 with respect to time is minus 3t plus a. Now, in order to find the particular solution, we need to find A. Uh, we can clearly see in the question, it says the truck starts from rest. So, what that means is, when T was 0, V was also 0, at rest, 0 speed. Substituting these values above, we get lin of 0 0.2 equals A. So, A is lin 0 0.2. Now, substituting A back into our general solution to find a particular solution, the equation becomes lin 0 0.2 minus 3v equals 3t minus 3t, that is, plus lin of 0 0.2. Now, we want to use the laws of logarithms to combine the two equations. So what we have to do is add 3t to both sides and subtract lin of 0 0.2 minus 3v from both sides. So the equation becomes 3t equals lin 0 0.2 minus lin 0 0.2 minus 3v. Finally, we can use the laws of logarithms now to combine the two. So the equation becomes lin 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.2 minus 3v. When two logs are subtracted, they become divided by is equal to 3t. And finally, Divide both sides by 3, t is equal to 1 over 3, lin 0 0.2, all divided by 0 0.2 minus 3v. And that's exactly how the question has stated it. So, part c says, find v as a function of time and sketch the function. So basically, what it wants us to do is make v the subject. So going back to our equation, this one here, I've multiplied both sides by 3 again to go back to this. The rule we're going to use is simple. If lin x equals y, where x and y are two variables, then e to the power y equals x. It's a way of changing from lin to the exponential function. Now, Going back to our equation, if we apply this rule, in our equation, the x is this expression here, this whole expression, 
and our y is this expression here. So it becomes e to the power 3t is equal to 0 0.2 all divided by 0 0.2 minus 3v. You can see we've got rid of the lin, and at the same time we can now rearrange the equation to make v the subject. So let's start by multiplying both sides by 0.2 minus 3v. So we're going to get 0 0.2 minus 3v all in brackets multiplied by e to the power 3t equals 0 0.2. We're then going to divide both sides by e to the power 3t. So we're going to get 0 0.2 minus 3v is equal to 0 0.2 all divided by e to the power 3t. Then we're going to subtract 0.2 from both sides. So it becomes minus 3v is equal to 0 0.2 divided by e to the power 3t minus 0 0.2. Now multiplying both sides by minus 1, and dividing both sides by 3 to get rid of the 3, we're going to get positive v equals 0 0.2 divided by 3 minus 0 0.2 all divided by e to the 3t. Now, we've achieved our goal. This is v as a function of time. But we can do a few things to make the equation a bit neater. We can say that v is equal to common factor 0 0.2, open bracket, 1 over 3, minus e to the minus 3t. And here we have v as a function of time. So... Part D says find the velocity when time is equal to 1. So all we do is substitute time is equal to 1 into our equation and we can find the velocity. So V is equal to 0 0.2 open bracket 1 over 3 minus E to the minus 3 since T is equal to 1. And from this, you'll find that the velocity is equal to 0 0.05. Meters per second. The final part says state one modeling assumption you used. Well, one modeling assumption is that the train is modeled as a particle. Another is that there's no friction. There's a resistive force, but there's no friction. There's no mu r. So that's two possible modeling assumptions that we could use.